Hello candidates, today I'm going to give you a quick update on this channel and we'll also break ground on the path forward by discussing what I call the seven C's of leadership. I am Simon the Zealot and you're watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. Okay, first thing, in reviewing my content so far and thinking about what I want to create going forward, I've determined that between my channel and the other channels dedicated to Officer at Cannot School, a reasonably committed person has more than enough resources to get to and through Officer at Cannot School. So I'm going to be moving away from OCS prep. Uh, that's not to say that I won't touch the subject again, just that it won't be my core focus. What I really want to do moving forward is to standardize and streamline my content, and uh, I will be doing that in the format of a talk show. Now, Quantico is known as the crossroads of the Marine Corps because a lot of what goes on, even in the far reaches of the Marine Corps, either starts in or passes through Quantico. With this show, I want to set you up for success not only at OCS and TBS, which happen in Quantico, but beyond, well into your Marine Corps career and even into civilian life. Hence the title, Beyond the Crossroads. The basic mission statement of this program is to provoke all of my viewers, but especially Marines and aspiring Marines, to hire moral, mental, physical, and tactical planes by providing content and discussions in those four areas. The show will be a compilation of my thoughts, theories, experiences, and research, as well as the word of whatever competent authority is necessary for a given topic. I will, as always, leave room for discussion. Starting with the next episode, I will cover a main topic and uh, will also include other segments, such as PT plans, updates from around the Marine Corps, common wisdom, weapons and tactics, summaries, etc., etc. My plan is to push out an episode every weekend. To wrap this thought up, I will uh, say the following. Uh, there's nothing quite as fierce as the pride of being a Marine. It is every Marine's duty to defend and uphold what is right and good, and to keep not just their honor, but the honor of the Marine Corps clean. Sometimes that basic responsibility can get lost in all of the noise. Through this program, I intend to ensure that that message is always heard. With all that said, let's get into our first discussion, which I've titled The Seven C's of Leadership. The seven C's are the seven fundamental traits that a leader must have if he wants to set himself and his team up for success. Each trait starts with the letter C, and it's also a play on the seven C's, so you get it. I'll give you a definition and a personal thought on each. The first C is competence. This is knowing your job and doing it well. In many ways, competence is the most important trait because there's no faster way to lose your audience in the Marine Corps than by not knowing what you are doing. Now, everyone starts from a place of ignorance on a given topic, so competence is largely a function of practice and determination. There are very few things in the Marine Corps that a reasonably intelligent person couldn't master with practice and determination. Because Marines are first to fight, I'll s highlight a, a special competency known as combat readiness. For those of you who haven't been commissioned yet, OCS and the other commissioning sources are followed by the basic school, TBS, which teaches every Marine officer to be a provisional rifle platoon commander. Also, enlisted Marines go through Marine combat training after boot camp, which teaches basic infantry weapons and tactics to non-infantry enlisted Marines. So as far as uh, the Marine Corps is concerned, combat readiness should be a competency of every Marine and especially of its officers. The second C is confidence, which I'll split into two parts. The first part is internal confidence, what I call conviction. This is having a strong belief in your core principles and in your abilities. Conviction is not static. It is 
refined and built up and strengthened through experience and self-reflection. Sometimes your conviction will make you unpopular. This is why you need to refine and mature it so that its rightness overcomes its unpopularity. The second type of confidence is external confidence or what I call command presence. This is projecting that inner confidence onto your audience until they have the same level of confidence in you as you have in yourself. Here, think of giving people the warm and fuzzies about what you're trying to convey. The third C is care or compassion. This is having a genuine concern for those in your charge and sacrificing your well-being for their well-being. Here, the little things that you do daily will mean just as much, if not more than, the big things that you do occasionally. You don't need to be your Marine's best friend or baby them, but they do need to be more than a headcount to you. Marines especially know their duty, but they can tell when you're looking out for yourself before you're looking out for them. They need to know that you care. Get to know the details in their life and look for opportunities to grow and encourage them. Here, think leaders eat last. Not only should the leader be last in line, but eating, i.e. self-comfort, should be the last priority when there are objectives at stake, especially when it's considering your team. The fourth C is communication. Communication is being able to speak or signal your way to mission completion regardless of the circumstances. Communication is the glue of teamwork. The more effectively that you are able to communicate, the more problems you stop from being created later down the line. The fifth C is composure. Composure is staying calm when there is reason to panic. Now, spoiler alert, a lot of things in life will not go as planned. A lot of your plans will fall apart. Some people will want to slam the panic button at the first wrinkle. As a leader, you have to maintain and project calm so that people around you have someone to lean on when circumstances take a turn for the worse. This in turn channels their energy towards solving the problem and not towards panicking. Panic comes in many shapes and sizes. It could be anything from a personal crisis to some administrative decision that uh, didn't go your way. Composure allows you to take in a wide range of bad news and not fall apart, which is important because that will enable you and the people around you to move forward. The sixth C is courage. Courage is overcoming fear to secure an objective. This fear could be fear of physical harm, emotional harm, or political harm. Courage ultimately comes down to a decision to increase your exposure to adverse consequences to achieve some worthy goal. You have to begin with the end in mind, and courage is making the leap to close the distance between your current circumstances and the end that you envision. The seventh C is culpability. This is taking ownership of everything within your sphere of influence. In some ways, this is unfair. If you're in any position of authority, your risks probably outweigh your resources. There is really no alternative though. If the guy in charge spends his time pointing fingers at his subordinates or at circumstances or whoever, whatever else, what does that do to his team? It destroys their confidence, destroys their initiative and destroys their cohesion. Taking ownership has the exact opposite effect. Listen to this uh, illustration from Steve Young. The rest of your teammates have basically said to you, you know, you're the quarterback, do something great. Do something really good with it. We trust you, you know, we think you're pretty good. And so then I throw it to the other team and they have this inevitable moment when they look back at me and say, what, we, why? Why did you do that, <laughs> right? We trusted you, we're working hard for you, why would you, why would you do that? And so what do you want to do? Now, 60,000, 80,000 people watching the game, as, as Stan mentioned, they're muttering, you know, something, and, and you know, you hear the kind of, and, and so there's this moment when now the lights are on, they turn to me, they say, why did, you, why did you do that? And so your human nature is, you want to explain it, right? This is not like I meant to do it. <laughs> like, I didn't drop back and just 
okay, I'm going to screw everything up. I can't wait. Right? No one, you don't do it on purpose. But there it is in, in front of everybody. It's like you can't fake it. it. It happened. And now you want to explain it. And so I would go into these long explanations, you know, uh, of, of why this horrible thing had happened, you know, lo logical things like, uh, you know, the receiver turned the wrong way, which he does sometimes, you know, and then you, 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 you trust him or you get hit right when you throw the ball or something like that. And, uh, and I noticed over the years that the guys didn't respond. They would not respond to my kind of explanation of the intervening uh, circumstances that had led to this horrible thing that had happened. What they responded to after trial and error, and that's from negotiation too, it's not a science, it's like it, it's trial and error. You know what I mean? It's like, so I was trying different things. When I'd make a mistake, I'd think, okay, what should I do? I'll fall on the sword, what should I do? And what, what they wanted to hear was, hey, look, I screwed it up. It was in my hand, and now it's in theirs. So I, I messed it up. But that's only half of the, I, you know, there's a lot of people running around going, oh, what was me? It's my fault. I'm sorry. I'm, it's all me. It's a, that's, that's the easy part in my mind. The hard part is now we're going to go fix it. That's what people responded to. I screwed it up, but now let's go to the sidelines. Let's get a drink of water. We'll rest up. We'll come back on the field. We'll go down and win the game. What do you say? And I'm going to lead you to do it. Now everyone got energized. They're like, hey, we, we're, we're in this together. In fact, they'd go to the sidelines, and they'd go to the coach and say, well, the coach would say, what happened? He says, well, I turned the wrong way. It was like everyone's like all this accountability came rushing into this group of people, and everybody wanted to be accountable because the, the guy who screwed it up was ultimately accountable. The seven C's come together to form the ocean of an organization, and that is its culture. This is the environment that the people of that organization swim in. Regardless of their ability to swim, everyone, to varying degrees, is affected by the condition and depth of the water. The kind of culture that you want to have in your organization is one where your people are most able to grow to their full potential and where the organization is getting the most out of every person. The key thing to remember is that your culture is always changing. It is either growing or dying. Your people are either swimming or they're sinking. When you think of culture, you should also think of the work that you would do as a farmer. You have to plant, nurture, and protect the crop. If you take these high-level actions, the crop will do the growing on its own. And if conditions are good, it will grow abundantly. If, however, you don't do the hard work that's required to grow a crop, your crops will die and you will just grow weeds. So that wraps up this discussion on the seven C's of leadership. Obviously, this wasn't an exhaustive conversation and uh, does leave room for further discussion. If you have any opinions or insights, or if you don't care for alliteration or imagery, uh, fill out the little comments form below and I'll be sure to send that right up for you. If you want to contact me directly, send me an email at beyondtheroads at gmail.com. I promise you this, uh, there's plenty more to come. So comment, like, subscribe, share, you know, all that noise. And always, always, always remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer.